My friend Juan from Learn With Juan, I'll link his channel in the description, suggested I do a video on how I did the wheels for the Chambler. And I already painted those, they're in the video, but I did a quick thing with them. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a full tear down and full cleanup on this one. I already had the tire removed. There's some little things I'll show you how to take off and some of the easy ways to get some of the pieces off, but it's, it's a lot of scrubbing. And if you have a sandblaster, use it, because it'll make your life easier. But for this purposes, don't. This wheel is probably about a five out of 10. It's got some pitting and some things, but overall the structure is in good shape. It is a steel wheel. The wheels I did for the Chandler were great. They were seven or eight out of 10. So this one's gonna take a lot of effort to chip off a lot of the rust. It's not gonna look 100% perfect. Part of that's because of the way the wheel's shaped and I'll show you some of that, but you can make a lot with a little, a couple cans of paint, a lot of sandpaper time, and you can make something look a heck of a lot better. So we'll go through that now. It's real basic stuff to look at when you're looking at a wheel, if you're gonna refinish it is, is the lip damaged? It's not as big a deal on steel wheels. You can normally fix them or have them fixed. It becomes a problem with aluminum because they tend to crack. They're not normally forged. Forged wheels can be re reformed, reshaped, but cast ones can't. There's no underlying damage that I see on this wheel. It's just rusty and crusty. And that is Michigan. If you live in a state that doesn't have a lot of rust, good on you, because probably all you're gonna have to do is scuff them and shoot them with paint. Shoot them with paint. Show you an easy way to take wheel weights off and take as much of this crust out of the wheel in the barrel here as humanly possible. The outside of a wheel like this is called a barrel. It's the center, but the barrel is what matters. We'll get some of this flakier surface rust off. You want the wheel surface in here to be as good as possible because this is what the tire actually seats to. It seats up against here and over the lip. So you want that to be good because you actually can get a decent amount of leaks from the rim face if they're pitted and damaged. Don't be afraid of pulling wheel weights. Just be careful, especially on an aluminum wheel. They're not very complicated to pull. You just want to get some leverage on them and pull them up. That's basically all there is to it. They do make tools for it, but unless you're working in an entire store, you don't need them. They pound this lip edge here down over the wheel. That's what gets them to stay where they are. And these are made out of lead, so you want to recycle them. Just don't throw them out. Go ahead and start chipping some of the bigger chunks of rust off the face of the wheel in the inner barrel area. This is what you see, so you want this to really focus your attention on this surface. You don't see a lot of what's in here. You don't want it to look like crap, but it doesn't have to be anything as long as it's not in bad shape. If there's rust holes or rest of those things, then you gotta think about what you're doing. Just go ahead and scrape whatever you can to loose stuff off. Any dirt you see, it's a good time to take it off right now. We'll come back through with wire wheel and grinding this and some sandpaper. Especially in steel wheels, there's this area where the wheel center and the barrel meet and they're welded. They collect a lot of junk, especially with this basic Jeep design. Good example of what I'm talking about. This, all this loose flaky rust, let's get rid of all this. Probably a pretty bad example if you live in other states where this doesn't happen, but this is actually fairly decent for Michigan. Not great, decent. So I'm just gonna chip all this loose stuff off and we'll get to using the power tools. Well, it's time to make a mess. Definitely wear protection. Also, try not to drop the uh, parts out of your tools. That, that's helpful. <laughs> Didn't exactly stay locked in. A good way to go about this, try to use the valve stem as a location so you know your, where you start and where you stop. That way you're not doing a lot of work you don't need to and it gives you a point of reference. If some of the wheels are clean and you're scuffing them up, it gives you a point where you, you know you're not doing stuff over and over and over again for no reason. I'm gonna keep changing out the wire wheels, give me a different effect to be able to get into different spots on the wheel. You just wanna keep cleaning, do the best job you can. Just be careful with wire wheels because they will come apart on you. They're not fun to pick out of you, not one bit.
use a couple different types of grinders and sanders. This is an inexpensive little warrior palm sander from Harbor Freight. I think this is all at 20 bucks. It's actually served me pretty well. With the diamond shape or the pointed tip, you can get into some of the grooves and areas you can't get into with other types of sanders. This is only going to be so effective that I'll use some air tools and larger grinder if I need to, probably for the back stuff. I'm use the sander to get the lip and all the areas where the tire sits. I'm also going to sand around and everything. Anything I can get in with the edges and get as nice as I can with this thing. Or go for the more aggressive stuff. There are going to be areas I can't get. The biggest thing to remember, you're just getting the junk off. You're not trying to sand into the body of the wheel. You don't want to deform it or damage it. You just want to get all the crap off. So don't go too crazy. Take a look at it as you're going. If it looks like you're taking a little too much out, back off, use a lighter grit sandpaper, do something like that. You don't want to gouge and damage the wheel, you're trying to clean it. I found that's the easiest way to get the inner barrel face. Remember, this is your most important part. This is what seals, so definitely give it a good once over. Lots of sanding, lots of chipping, trying to get all the loose junk out of here. There's so much crap in this wheel. You just got to use your judgment. If this wheel was any farther gone, I would not be reusing it because you're getting to a point where it's dangerous. This is going to be a spare, so as long as it's structurally sound, it's not perfect looking, it's fine. It's going to live its life in the trunk, barring something stupid happening. And while I am a YouTube automotive guy, you know, I, I don't expect to do something incredibly stupid. That was an option. All the heavy junk is off the face of the wheel. I'll come back through and hit it with some more progressive sandpaper, but I got to start knocking away at the junk on the back of the wheel, the back of the barrel of the wheel. Gives you a good idea of what you can accomplish a little bit of time. The wheel is still by no means perfect, but you can do all that stuff I just did by hand. It's just going to take you about forever. This is still by no means the fastest method ever either. Best bet would be to sandblast it in, at least you know what shape the wheel's actually in. Don't have the access to that at the moment. I also don't really have the time. Once you get the final stuff all sanded down, I hit it two or three times with some cleaners and degreaser, get as much of the junk off as I can. I will be hitting with oven cleaner or some kind of deep degreaser, but I don't have the time or the access to a live water source outside and that stuff stinks. I don't want to do it inside my garage attached to my house. I'm going to get back to it and I'll show you the results. Ow! Well, the wheel is as... I can't see my head. Well, the wheel is as sanded as it's going to get. I'm going to clean the table up. And I can start hitting it with the degreaser. It looked more impressive spread out. That's all I could say. It's still a lot of stuff, though. Should have worn a respirator for this part, too. But, yeah, you know, what are you going to do? Oh, it's scrub dub dubbing time. Just gave it a good old spritzing with D-Germ. Now I'm gonna scrub it once all the way around, clean it off, and do it at least once more, if not twice more. Scrubbing this stuff in will get a lot of the loose junk, especially the brake dust and junk out of here. I do love that D germ. I wish they still made it. The stockpile is getting new. I'm going to try to get down in this crevice where the barrel meets the face. I'm going to have to use the compressed air to blow that joint out. You can let it dry if you have the time. It's always a good idea to hit it with air if you've got it, because air will get out stuff you didn't even realize was there. It's definitely not going to be the best wheel I've ever painted. This should look just fine. Assuming I get that little tiny rock out of there. There we go. Fries are done. Now it's time to hit it with some of that, uh, you know, rust encapsulating paint that I only have the rust-oleum left. So we'll see how all this works. 
you can keep going and going and going until you drive yourself nuts or get it as close as you can get it where you're happy with it and start moving forward. That's where I'm at. Go ahead and let that dry for about 10 minutes and I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out pull the chandler in and bring the wheel back in because it's supposed to snow for the next 12 hours so I'd rather don't don't want snow on either of them this is the first time I've ever had the duplicolor rust fix work so I'm very happy I'm gonna go ahead and prime the back side of the barrel get all that stuff done and then get it ready and then I can flip it and do the face because face is the most important part it's also been snowing for about 10 hours, so I'm going to do this quick and bring it in and out and in and out. So I don't know how much of it I'm going to show you. I'll show you as much of it as I can. This also is not the proper way to paint. The weather's not right. The humidity's not right. But it's what I'm going to do because it's what i got time for. So let's get to it. I'm going to close the garage door between coats. Give the best chance I can to stick. School bus. I'm just going to put the two coats of primer on the inner barrel and the wheel surface on the back side. That'll be good enough. I moved it on the cardboard so that hopefully the paint doesn't set and stick it to it. And then I have to re-sand the whole front face. Well, the interface of the wheel is done. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and get the front side. I'm going to go ahead and hit a couple of bad spots with etching primer. Then I'll give the whole face a nice coat of primer. Let it dry. And then, like I said, tomorrow we'll give it a top coat. We'll probably give it three top coats tomorrow. But, you know, it's the same thought process. <laughs> A little bit less etching primer in the can than I thought I did. We'll smooth it out though. Definitely got to invest in some better microphones. So last coat of primer on the face. Let it dry. I'll show you what the results in the morning. See if there's anything I need to touch up. And then it's top coat time. It's so next morning. Everything's had a chance to dry. Nice. I'll show you some of the issues on the wheel face and the back. This is stuff you could fix with a nice layer of Bondo. But realistically, you'd want to find a better wheel if you're going to use this as an everyday facing wheel in your car. Again, this is going to be a spare tire. So it's going to look just fine sitting in the back of the trunk. If it comes out, I'm going to need it at that point, so it won't really matter. Go ahead and flip it over and start the painting process. I don't like to give it three or four coats. This white paint does want to show through the primer or whatever is behind the wheel, so I want to give it a nice chance to look good as it can. You want to shake the can about every other pass or every minute or so as the can says just get it you know going also if you wipe off the tip a lot of times you can actually eliminate drops and drips and things that you don't want in the paint looks like three coats is going to get it done let it sit for at least a couple hours and i'll flip it and do the face now well, the wheel's been drying for about six hours i'll show you how they look there's definitely going to be some issues but it's inside the wheel so you're not going to see it it's not going to look the best but it's all white. You won't see it with the brake drum and everything else in there. So it's good enough for what it is, which is a spare. I've always gotten the best results going around the wheel face. You don't want to move the wheel. You want to move around the object. It also gives you a better line of sight so you can see if there's issues. Bring a light with you if you need one. You can really see any of the crevices and any of the areas that are hard to see, especially at angles. Just take your time and try to have fun with it. The worst thing that's going to happen is you might have to redo the wheel. You can always scuff it off and reshoot the top coat and see how it looks. It's only paint in time. Two down, two to go. You want pretty consistent coverage by the third coat. The first two coats are just to make it tacky, make sure everything sticks. The fourth coat is going to be mildly heavy. I'm going to let it dry an extra minute or two and then really put a thick coat on it. Not too thick. At least not in a pattern. Try to take my time and spray it so it doesn't goo. I don't want goo because you got to fix goo. Not a fan of goo. 
I'm paying special attention to where the barrel and the wheel meets because I now have the mask on my mouth. I'm paying special attention to where the barrel and the center of the, the face of the wheel meets because that's where the junk gets trapped. It's going to look the worst. You won't see it when the tire's on and everything else, but you can really see it now. Now's the time to get what you can get if you see issues. And of course the wind picked up and you can see the paint blowing around. That's why I have the chambler covered because I don't want anything more on that. I've already got enough paint. I got to try to remove from that thing, make it look right. If you hear the spray of the can start to change as you're going, you want to stop, pull the can back, wipe the nozzle off, shake it a bunch. Because it's probably running either out of paint or out of spray, out of the stuff that makes the spray. You def There's a name for it. I'll put it somewhere. You definitely want to take your time because that's when you're really going to get blotches and just junk falling out of the tip of the can and you're ruining everything you've done. <clears throat> well, that's about as good as it's going to get. There's going to be little imperfections in the things. Again, this is not aimed to be a perfect wheel. I just wanted to look really good at a distance, which is exactly what it's going to do. Let it dry overnight first thing in the morning. We'll show you how it all looks. If there's anything to touch up, I'll try to touch up then. But now is the time on your last coat to really go around it with light and see if there's anything you can see right off the bat because fixing it now is easier than trying to fix it later. And like I said, I'm going to keep moving the wheel as you can hear the, the paint. I don't want it to settle on the cardboard, tear the cardboard up, and then have to refinish the wheel again. It does make a difference. You don't have to pull it up and move it around, but definitely just pick it up and just slide it even. Just get it off the, the extremely wet sections of the cardboard. Well, the wheel's been drying for about 18 hours now. It's all nice and cured. I think it looks pretty darn good. Give you some close-ups and then I'll close out this video. I'm not actually wet sanding the wheel. I'm wet sanding some of the detail paint I've done on the chambler, which you'll see in a future video. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> so much crap in this wheel.